good afternoon. There are two images being shown on the screen above me. One was an image that I took of my dog, and the other was generated by the computer using artificial intelligence. Now, I want to give you a few seconds to determine which image you think I took and which one was created by the computer. Hi, my name is Shilpi Birdhan. I'm a junior at Jinx High School, and I've always been fascinated by the worlds of technology and business. And when the opportunity presented itself last semester in my seminar class, I was able to research artificial intelligence and consumer shopping habits. To begin, I'll discuss the day-to-day -day uses that you and I interact with AI today. Next, how do retail and brick and mortar stores implement AI in their stores? Afterwards, why do firms implement artificial intelligence into the infrastructure? And finally, what does this mean for consumers like you and me and firms alike? Now, for those of you that thought I took photograph A, you'd be correct. That is the one I took, and why, you may wonder, does photograph B look so similar? Well, I used an AI model named Dolly. Dolly was created by the same firm that created ChatGPT. How Dolly works is you enter details into the model, and you say, I want an image that's like this and this, and it outputs an image. I did not just input image A and it generated image B based off of that, but rather the machine took these details through its training and generated image B. But how does Dolly know how to do this? Well, AI is trained quite differently tra compared to traditional computing, in which programmers input hundreds of lines of code, and the computer executes the code sequentially. With artificial intelligence, the computer is taught to mimic the human brain. It's looked at large patterns of data, and it's taught what are the patterns within this data and the different data sets. It's essentially pattern recognition. Now, above me, there are many different uses of day-to-day -day uses of AI, but you've probably used AI and interacted with it today. If you scroll down your social media feed, the next image being shown is not by accident, but rather the algorithm knows what you interact with, what followers, what creators you follow, and what you like and dislike. And based on that, to maximize engagement, the algorithm pushes out certain posts and videos to you. Now, I'll delve into music streaming services. Whether you use Amazon Music, Apple Music, Spotify, or Pandora, they all operate the same way. The next song being played isn't because all songs were lumped together and they say, all these users will like these songs, but rather it's created to a tailored experience for you. The way you interact with the platform and what you like and dislike, the algorithm plays a different song for every single person. For example, if you play Summertime Sadness by Lana Del Rey, the next song being played may be a song created by the Arctic Monkeys. Now, this isn't by accident, as previously mentioned, but rather the way that different users interact with songs. They listen to certain songs and the ones that they like and listen to repeatedly, the same user that listens to similar songs of you, dislike and don't repeat that often. The algorithm is taught on a daily basis, and you are helping train AI every single time you interact with the different algorithms. This is all because of pattern recognition. The model knows what patterns to look for, what different users like, the way that you interact and the different times that you use songs that you like and dislike and how you switch to different songs and skip others. The algorithm is working and getting smarter each time to create a different experience for you, you and me, all of us together. Now, all the different algorithms operate basically the same way. With e-commerce, they also look at shopping history and browsing history, what you like and what products you purchase. And for that, it's mainly there to target specific products to different users and what they may or may not like. Now, those are all the online uses of artificial intelligence. But in fact, today, retail brick and mortar stores are implementing artificial intelligence in their stores. If you were to walk into a chain grocery store and you go to the self-checkout machine, there's multiple uses of technology being presented. The camera, the conveyor belt, in the scanning area, in the backing area. This uses Internet of Things devices, better known as IOTs. These are devices that are connected to the Internet and transmit data in real time. Let's say you were to buy a $15 candle that weighs about seven pounds, and you put it on the conveyor belt, and you lift it up. The computer senses the amount of weight that was there, and of course, standard deviation is built in, and you pick it up, you scan it, and you place it in the bagging area. But somehow, accidentally, as the Right, was being distributed from the conveyor belt to the bagging area, you scan a $2 box of cereal that weighs only about a pound. 
This will send an alert to the machine because they know that quickly an item can't be moved from one end to another and not be scanned, and the weights have to match up to around the same area. This, of course, will flag down a friendly attendant to come and check on you to make sure everything's going okay. The camera above you isn't just to monitor you and where your hands are, but it's also there to look at what you put on the scanning belt. In fact, today you can go to many supermarkets, place produce on the scale, and somehow the computer already knows what's on there. This isn't just a lucky guess or anything, but rather, let's say you were to put an apple on the scale, ready to find the PLU code to plug it in and put it in your basket. But how does the computer know that you put an apple there and suggest that to you? The, the machine learning model was trained by looking at thousands upon thousands of different photos. And back to pattern recognition, it's taught this is an apple, this is a banana, this is a banana, this isn't an apple, over and over and over again. The computer can mimic the way humans act and behave and say, this is a banana, this is an apple, and differentiate all the different produce and different items just by looking at it. Now, if you look at the photograph below, it's not just any normal shopping cart, but rather it's a shopping cart filled with different pieces of technology. You have the traditional scanners on the cart, as well as weight sensors, and of course at the bottom, there's all the wires to make sure everything's functioning properly. This cart is one that's used at the Amazon Go store in Seattle. The store is quite different than traditional supermarkets. As you walk in, you enter, you scan your designate QR code, which is essentially your Amazon social security number. You walk inside, and there are thousands of cameras. In this store, you can actually just take things off the shelves, put them in your bag, and walk out. It's perfectly OK. But why is this OK? There's thousands of cameras monitoring your every move and where you're going and what you're doing. For example, if you were to walk over to the shelf where there's 15 cans of soup there, and you walk and you cover it, and the cameras are watching where you're going, and they, right before you go, they see there's 15 cans of soup on the shelf. And then you walk away, there's only 14 present. Well, of course, it's a good chance that you took the soup. The camera knows how much was there before, and in that short amount of time that you've left, one is missing. The good eye estimate for the machine model to understand that you're the one that took it. The store only has employees that restock the goods. There's different sensors on the shelves and cameras that are monitoring everything going on in the store. And within just a few minutes of you exiting, it's able to send you a summary of everything that you picked up and bought from that store. You place an item in that cart, there's not sensors on the products. But rather, the computer knows and the cart knows what was put in there based on the look of the product. Just like the supermarket, where the machine knows what's an apple and what's a banana, this cart knows what's a can of soup and what's a can of juice. No. This is not, AI in the store is not to make it harder for anyone to shop, but try to ease the ability for consumers in retail stores. Now, you may wonder, why do firms implement artificial intelligence, although there's a large startup cost involved? Training the different models is no, by, by any means cheap. It can cost hundreds of thousands of dollars just to train it and keep it functioning. Even ChatGPT is costing thousands of dollars a day just to maintain and run. Now, if you look at the first photo being shown above, that is a robot bartender in Las Vegas. There's not an attendant nearby. It operates fully on its own. How this works is you go up to the, the stall, you input what drink you want on the iPad, and it makes it for you. In just a few minutes, you get your drink without ever having to talk to a human. How great is that? And then it's delivered to you. And of course, after your drink is delivered, the robot will ask you to tip. But don't worry. Robots don't have feelings yet. We'll see in about five to 10 years. And then, once that drink is delivered, you just walk away. You may wonder, why does the operator just put a robot instead of hiring labor and having workers there? You only have to train the machine once. One program can be dispersed to multiple robots to perform the same task. Rather than retraining 15 employees every few months, the one time you teach the robot and you teach the algorithm to perform, it's able to do that over and over and over again without ever forgetting. This robot is able to work 24 hours, seven days a week, nonstop. Doesn't take breaks or anything. It's cutting that labor cost for a repetitive task for the 
operated. Now, the photos below, the three photos below, are from our robots that are used in Amazon Warehouse. This warehouse is roughly 4.5 million square feet in size. It's quite a big square warehouse, and it can be kind of difficult for workers and employees to walk from one end to the other carrying items. These robots are able to carry up to 50 packages and items at a time. And these algorithms, these robots know the most efficient routes to take in the order to pick up the items. And all these algorithms, are, all these robots are able to talk to each other while moving about the warehouse, cutting down on the time it takes to go from one end to another and bumping into each other. And it knows what stations to stop at and where to go and maneuver around this large warehouse. Rather than training a new employee to maneuver about the warehouse and go to different areas, the programmers had to only train one robot and make one algorithm that is dispersed to all of them. These robots are able to move around the clock work around the clock and constantly perform their tasks. And this is much cheaper for firms because they don't have to re rehire labor if one employee is no longer able to work. E essentially, even though that these robots may be harder to maintain over time and with the, the large electricity costs, these robots are able to perform these tasks over and over and over again nonstop. And firms normally opt for artificial intelligence for repetitive tasks because their main goal is not only to increase productivity, but also maximize profitability. Now, all of this is good for a current day, but what does this mean for consumers like you and me? Well, AI is constantly evolving and changing. It's reported that 80% of consumers that are aged from the age of 18 to 25 prefer to talk to a chatbot as opposed to go to a customer service representative online because you don't have to wait in a long line to talk to someone and they found that these chatbots are able to respond to their concerns quite quickly. And of course, many firms have customer service representatives waiting on the side if the chatbot was not able to effectively meet their concerns. These chatbots are able to work around the clock. They're able to respond to hundreds of people's concerns at one time. It's much cheaper to have these chatbots in place because they're trained once, and you can disperse many more of these algorithms to many different robots, different machine learning models. Now, yes, these robots are taking jobs. The World Economic Forum reports by 2025, 87 million jobs will be lost to artificial intelligence, but 97 million jobs will cre be created. Humans are needed to program the robots and train them for these specific tasks. Give them the data that they need to learn from, to perform to their best ability. And of course, what do these robots do? They cut down the time and they kind of cut down those repetitive tasks, but they also are tailored to make a good experience for consumers like you and me. Back to the product recommendations. 70% of consumers report that they bought a product based off of the recommendation of the e-commerce platform they're shopping on. By inputting exactly what you want, in just a few seconds, the algorithm is able to suggest to you tailored products that you may like. It has learned what you like and users like you like and what they've bought and had good experiences with. All this combined creates a tailored shopping experience for you and I. It makes consumers feel that these companies are more personable to them and they're able to respond to their needs much better and much quicker. Now, Artificial intelligence is not going to replace humans by any means. AI is constantly evolving and changing each and every day. All the prior data and statistics were just projections. The future of AI will be something that's quite interesting for all of us to look at. And we never know what could happen in the future and how far AI can advance. But one thing is for sure, it'll be quite interesting for all of us to see what happens. Thank you.